So to start off the pseudocode, let's define a function called delete. Now it will take in as its parameters the value it wants to delete and the tree it wants to delete from. So how do we take in a tree as a parameter? We have to give the root because from the root all other nodes of the tree can be accessed. So we give the root to the function and by that we mean we are giving the tree from which we want to delete. Now what does this function return? It will return the node which we are going to delete. So node is going to be our return type. So the first step is we will search for the node at which the value we want to delete can be found. We can do this using the search function which we have already defined in a previous video. So we can say node x is equal to search of value comma root. So what does this function do? It searches for this value in the tree which is has this as the root and what does it return? It returns the node at which that value was found. If however the value is not found it will return none. So let's see what we can do with this information. So if this function returns null, we know that the value is not in the tree. In that case, there is no way we can delete that value from the tree. So let's see. If x is equal to null, what does it mean? It means that the value we are trying to delete does not exist in the tree. So in that case, we cannot delete it and we can return null. So now that we have come to this line of code, we know that our value has been found and the node at which it has been found is x. So this is the node we need to return. So let's make a copy of this node in another node. Say node ret is equal to x. Now that we have made a copy of this node in ret and we know what to send back, let's look at the three cases we have seen before. So the first case is x is a leaf node. So we can check that if is leaf x in the tree which has root root. So this is a function you can write externally. What it does is it checks whether x is a leaf node in the tree which has this root. So if it comes as true it means x is a leaf node. If it doesn't come as true it means x is not a leaf node. You can write this function by simply checking whether x dot left and x dot right both equal to null. In that case it is a leaf node and should return true. So in such a case what must we do? We need to go to the parent of x and then break off the link to x. So let p be the parent of x. p is equal to get parent of x comma root. This is another function which you can write externally. What it will do is it will take in x and a tree which has this as the root and it will it will return the parent of x in that particular tree. Once we get the parent of x we need to cut off the link between p and x. So first to do that we need to know whether x is the right child of p or x is the left child of p. So if p dot left dot data is equal to equal to x dot data this means that x is the left child of p in such a case we must break off the left link of p 
So we say that p dot left is equal to null. So we check whether x is the left subchild of p. If it is, we break off that link by setting p dot left to null. Similarly, if we see that x is the right subchild of p, we need to set p dot right to null. So if p dot right dot data is equal to x dot data, then we know that x is the right subchild of p and in that case what must we do? We must set p dot right to null. So with that we finish our checks if x is a leaf node. Once we do this what must we do? We need to return the node at which the value was found which we have already stored in ret. So here we return ret and we come to the end of the leaf node check. Let's go to the next check. We have to check if x is a node with only one child. So this is another function which you can write externally. It will check whether x is a node which has only one child in the tree with this as the root. Now this check can be done by checking whether the left is null and the right is not null of that node or the right is null and the left is not null of that node. So this can be an external function written. So it will return true or false based on whether x has only one child or not. Okay, so what must we do if x only has one child? We need to replace x with that one child. That is, we link the parent to the child of x. So first let's get the parent of x. So p is equal to get parent of x comma root. Then we have to check whether x is the left subchild of p or if x is the right subchild of p. If x is the left subchild of p, then we need to replace the left subchild of p with the child of x. Similarly, if x is the right subchild of p, we need to replace the right subchild of p with the child of x. So first let's check if x is the left subchild of p. So if p dot left dot data is equal to x dot data, this means that x is the left subchild of p. In such a case, what must we do? We need to replace p dot left with the child of x. So by now we know that x has only one child, but we don't know whether that one child is the left child of x or the right child of x. So we check if x dot left is equal to null, what does that mean? That means that the only child of x is x dot right because x dot left is null that means x dot right would have been the child of x. So now we know that the single child of x is x dot right. What must we do? We must set p dot left to x dot right. So we set the left subtree of p to the single child of x which we found out to be x dot right. After this, we can return. This is the case when x dot right is the single child of x and x dot left is null. Now, let's look at the alternate case. If x dot right is equal to null, what does this mean? It means that x dot left is the single child of x. In that case, we set 
p dot left as x dot left and from here we can return so we have finished the case when the left subchild of p is x now we have to write the code for when the right subchild of p is x so now we need to check if the right subtree of p is x so if p dot right dot data is equal to x dot data then what must we do so we need to follow similar steps we know that x only has one child and we need to set that one child to p dot right but is that one child x dot left or x dot right we need to find that out so let's check if x dot left is equal to null what does that mean that means that the single child of x is x dot right in that case we set p dot right to x dot right from here we can return This is the case when x dot right is the single child of x. Now, if x dot right is equal to null, then we know that x dot left is the single child of x. In that case, we must set p dot right to x dot left. And from there, we can return. With this, we finish our check for x being a node with only one child. Now we come to the third case, when x has two children. So, if two children of x, comma root, this is a function you can write externally. It will give true if x has two children in the tree with this as the root and false if x does not have two children with in the tree with this as the root so if x has two children what must we do we need to replace x with its in order successor so first let's get the parent of x p is equal to get parent of x comma root then let's get the in order successor i is equal to get in order successor of x comma root this is another function you can write which is apart from the function we are writing right now it will have to return the node which is the in order successor of x in the tree with this as the root so now we need to replace x with i so how do we do that? We have to set the link of x's parent to i. So to do that, we must check whether x is the right subchild or the left subchild of p and link the subchild accordingly. So let's see. If p dot left dot data is equal to x dot data, what does this mean? It means that x is the left subchild of p. In that case, we must set the in order successor to the left subchild of p. So, p dot left is equal to i. After this, what must we do? Now, we are replacing x with i. So, we have now made the link from the parent to i. Now, we must also set the children of x to be the children of i. So we say that i dot left is equal to x dot left and i dot right is equal to x dot right. So in this way we are effectively replacing 
x with i. We are setting the link from the parent to x as the link from the parent to i. We are giving the left subchild of x as the left subchild of i and we are giving the right subchild of x as the right subchild of i. With, this, with these three steps, we are effectively replacing x with the node i. From here, we can return. So we return ret. Now we have to see the case if x is the right subchild of p. So if p dot right dot data is equal to x dot data, this means that x is the right subchild of p. In that case, we must set p dot right to i. So we are setting the parents right subchild to i. Then the steps repeat. We give the left subchild of x to the left subchild of i. And we give the right subchild of x to the right subchild of i. With this, we finish replacing x with i. Now we can return. With these two, we have finished the check for if x is a node with two children. And with that, we can finish our function. So that is how you write the pseudocode for deletion in binary search tree.